Step on it, boys. Let's get these out. Line them up in the sack so we can load on quick. I'll show these farmers they can't wreck my business. You're right, John. Who's willing to sell at his price? Why, I'd rather feed my silage to the pig. But they can't keep it up long. We'll stop him. Why, look at the price of grain. It's unreasonable. There's the 1015 now. She's coming in. That's bootleg milk you're shipping, John. It's milk. Good milk. As long as you farmers hold me up on the price, I'll buy it elsewhere. I'll ship it in and I'll ship it out. Now clear away from the platform. Come on, clear out of here. Stand back. Let's get these aboard. Let's hurry. We haven't any Let's jump it. That's it. Come on. Let's jump it. Hurry Noble Hotel? How is it? Well, it's the best. All right, that's it. Just a minute, lady. Where are you going? What do you want? I want to know where you're going. To the Noble Hotel. What's your business in Ainsley? I'm a school teacher. School teacher? Don't you know there's a milk strike going on in this town? I didn't know, but I can see that. Who are you going to teach? The farmers or the kids? Who needs it more? I'm asking the questions. You don't look anything like a school teacher to me. You better get back on that train. What do you mean? I mean, I've got reason to believe that you're an agitator. And we don't want that kind of talk in this town. What? Here, read this. It's an offer from your Board of Education. I'm to start teaching Monday morning. The children, not the farmers, and I don't know anything about your strike. Well, I, I'm sorry. You know, an officer can't be too suspicious of strange faces. I understand. Yours is a strange face, too. Let's get together and see if we can't figure out something. You told me what you were going to do. I know what I'm doing. Suit you all right? It's perfect. Laughing stops in the gold room at 12 o'clock. The band goes home then. What's so funny? I don't know. I guess it's that I expected a town with a bandstand in the middle where they take in the sidewalks at 8 o'clock. Not this town. What's the matter? Don't you like your town? In my town. I was only born here. Oh, I've heard a lot of nice things about Ainsley. You probably heard them from the Chamber of Commerce, and you wouldn't like it here if you lived here. Well, good night. What's your name? Chalky. You go to school, Chucky? Try and get out of it. You work here after school? Only on Saturday nights. It's a uh, good night for tips. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good, good night. night. Oh, who are mm. you? can't stay hey, I can't do it because I'm tired. I've got to get up in the morning, you know. I'm good. Here you are, Mother. <clears throat> Won't put it on, thanks. Now, we got to go. Yes, it's been a lovely party. Now, get your wrapped children. All right. Come on, I'm arguing this way when I tell them to do a thing. I'm surprised at the children who come to these dances on chaperones. Why, when I was their age, I never had a chaperone. I don't believe you. Well, I'm ringing Roger up properly. When I was 15, I used... Don't try to remember that far back. Oh, well. What are you all dressed up for? The dance is all over. <laughs> <laughs> don't fight, Roger. Not in your new suit. Oh, he ain't worth a fight, no how. Besides, he might have germs. Yes. Yeah. Mama says there ought to be two schools in town. One for our set and one for his kind. Here, buy old man another quart.
I beg your pardon. Aren't you in the wrong room? Same again, waiter. This one's on me. Listen to me, please. Will you get on your feet and get out of this room? I'll go home. I'm not around for the boys, Tony. This isn't Tony. That's familiar. I ought to know you. If it isn't Sweetie Pie. Don't you Sweetie Pie me. What are you doing? I'm calling the office. Hello. Answer somebody, please. Send a man up here to take the woman out of my room. Hello. Will you send somebody up here? There's a man in my room and he won't get out. And I never saw him before in my life. Thank you. Immediately. What'd you do? I sent for someone to come up and get you out of here. Too bad. You shouldn't have done that. I know that, Weasel. You'll ruin your reputation. I haven't been here long enough to get one. What? No reputation? I know this town. At sunrise, the natives will ride you out on a rail. And I don't want that to happen to you, little girl. Wouldn't it be simpler for you to get out, and then everybody would be happy? You got something there. Oh, why didn't you say so soon? Too late now. There's your rescue squad. Enter. What seems to be the trouble, Miss Evans? I found that man in my bed. Why, Mr. Matthews, what are you doing here? I told you over the phone to take room 218. What number is this? Why, uh, th this is 214. How could you make such a mistake? Well, uh, you came No excuses. Room. Now, I'll show you the way. I assure you, Miss Evans, this is out of the ordinary. But it's Saturday night, you know. I understand. That's John J. Matthews, Jr. His father owns the dairy. His father should hang a bell around his neck to keep him from getting lost. Think you were pretty smart Saturday night, eh? Oh, uh, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, smart guy. Trying to pick a fight with me when I was on a job knowing I can't fight back. Don't fight in your new suit, Roger. Now buy your old man another quart. Oh, we were just having a laugh. I didn't know you were so touchy about your old man. Everybody knows Yeah, uh, Well, you're not in your new suit, and I ain't in my uniform now. I don't want to fight, Chucky. I know you don't. Think it over. Good morning, children. Good morning. I'm Miss Evans. I know you're all sorry to lose Miss Minotti in the middle of the term, but if we make an effort to know each other, I'm sure we'll all get along very well. And now, if you'll take your history books and turn to page 72, please. Just a minute, please. Well, Shocky. What's your full name? Shocky Carter. Not your nickname, please. Your name. Shocky, and I like it. <laughs> that will do. The second bell's rung, you know. Yes, sir. Take your seat. Yes, sir. So, we will begin our study together where Miss Minotti left off, with the 13 colonies. I understand you have traced their settlement and progress through the colonial system. Now, we are concerned with the birth of a new nation, the United States. Uh, just a minute, please. You're... Uh, Roger Townsend. I hope you don't make a habit of arriving at this hour. Oh, no, ma'am. Very well. Take your seat. Silence. Those 13 little colonies were the hot-tempered children of a great empire. They were young and in some ways irrational. But they were peopled with adventurers from all walks of life who had journeyed to this country seeking freedom. My dad will get you fired at the Noble Hotel for this. He sure will. The mother country often dispatched her troublesome subjects to this wilderness. Preferring that they battle if the If you don't shut here, up, I'm going to paste you again. Well, you'll see. You'll see. Is there whispering going on back there? I can't talk about that, you know. Uh, let's see, what were we talking about? There ought to be two schools. Another for the scum on East End of Town. And his own land. Sure, you jelly bean, you're safe in here, ain't you? 
Are you boys doing that talking? Face straight in your seat, Sharky, and keep your eyes on me. I don't tolerate unnecessary interruptions. Now, about these 13 colonies. Their loyalties in the beginning were stronger to the mother country than to each other. But hardships and oppressions, however, soon welded them together. Their common grievances made them a unit. My dad knows what you come from. Trash. That's what he calls you. He says your old man's nothing but a common drunk. This. He started. He hit me first. I'm surprised at both of you. You might have had some consideration for me my first day here, if not for yourselves. Come with me. Elvira, take the class, please, and read them chapter 12. Yes, What is your problem, Miss Evans? These boys were fighting in class, Miss Hodges. So? This is serious. I thought it serious enough to bring to your attention. Such behavior doesn't fit you, Roger. No, Miss Hodges. What have you two to say for yourselves, if anything? I don't know why he struck me. I was listening to Miss Evans, and he hit me. I did defend myself. Chucky, were you taking advantage of the leniency of the new teacher? Look at me, Chucky. I'm speaking to you. Have you nothing to say? Nothing. Nothing what? Nothing, Miss Hodges. It is no doubt as clear to you, Miss Evans, as to me, which of these boys is the troublemaker. Quite the contrary, Miss Hodges. Shock is too silent. He puzzles me. Stubbornness is not a virtue. I didn't mean to imply that it is. He must have had some reason for striking Roger. I'm quite capable of giving you the reason, Miss Evans. I should have warned you about this boy. He's bad. That does not apply to Roger. We never have trouble with a boy who comes from such a fine family as Roger. How is your father? Very well, thank you, Miss Hodges. Tell him I asked after him. I will, Miss Hodges. You'll meet Roger's father. He's a charming and cultured gentleman. He's on our school board. Oh, I understand. My advice to you, Roger, is this. A wise man carefully selects his companions. Remember that. I will, Miss Hodges. You may return to your class. Not you. I'm forced to suspend you, Shockey, until the next board meeting. Your conduct offers no alternative, does it? The members will pass on your case to reinstate you or expel you as they see fit. Is that all? I should say so. But, Miss Hodges, are you being quite fair? I believe so. You brought him to me to be reprimanded? No, to be corrected, not condemned. Have you any suggestions? Well, something less humiliating. Let's talk this over with Shockey's father first. He is not on the school board, I presume, but surely he can best correct his son. What do you say to that, Shockey? I know Shockey's father, and I'm not blaming the boy for him. But so long as he chooses to behave like him, let him pay the fiddler. That will be all. Come, Shockey. Pulling down on my job. That 500 gallons of milk from Oakwood has to be tested. I tested it an hour ago. Well, uh, how about the reports for the inspector's office? They'll finish. I'm going to mail them up in town. Where were you Saturday night and Sunday? You weren't home. Some of the boys were in town. I stayed at the hotel. 
Oh, Dad, uh, I think it might be a good idea if one of us would inform the school board that we'll settle this strike soon. You're in bad enough with the farmers without antagonizing the town, too. No, you're beginning to think. Take care of it, will you, son? I sure will. You know you don't want to be expelled. I don't care what they do to me. Maybe I ain't no cop, but I'm glad I smacked him anyway. You were no good. Miss Hodges did. That's because you won't let her be interested in you. Chucky, I'm not only a teacher. I'm your friend. It's really my job. Oh, yeah? Really it is. Why do you think people dislike you? Few people even care enough about you for that. It's all right, I'll get by. Oh, I'm sure you will. I'd like to have you do better than just get by. You took me into her, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That was before I knew her. Well, can I go now? No. Chucky, what am I to tell the school board? Nothing. Nothing at all. I did think you were a fighter. I am a fighter, but she's the principal, ain't she? Mm-hmm. You know, Chucky, I have a hunch she's wrong about you. I think you're a regular fella. I don't know. Maybe Miss Hodges is right. Maybe I ain't no good. Not worth bothering about. Well, we'll talk this over with your father. Oh, it ain't gonna do no good to talk to the cap. You're just getting yourself into trouble. Well, I've given you every chance. You won't tell me anything. There ain't nothing to tell. Very well. Oh, wait. I'll tell you what you want to know. All right. Well, Roger said something Saturday night at the hotel. So I popped him for that this morning. And in class, he said something worse than that, so I whacked him again. What did he say? I don't remember exactly. Well, what was it about? I can't tell you that. Was it the truth? Well, it, it all depends upon how you look at a person. What person? Oh, uh, just a friend. Come on, Chucky. I'll walk along with you. Miss Evans, I believe. Please pause to witness my humility. Let me try and live down my past. Really, I'm up to my neck in apologies. I accept your apology. What about this evening? No. Then deep in that icy heart of yours, you don't really forgive me. I do forgive you, Mr. Matthew. Honestly? Cross your heart. Ah, oh, that's decent. That's regular of it. Now, will you let me through here, please? I will. Just tell me where you live. You checked out of the hotel, I know. I live in a very respectable boarding house. My landlady is an Indian. She scalped her first husband, and she's equally clever with a musket, and can hit a bullseye at 20 paces. I couldn't have described her better. I know the place. I'll be by at 7. These are the tracks, Miss Evans. You better not go any further. Beyond lies the sinful city of the misunderstood, eh? Well, I don't know about that, but people won't respect you none if you're seen going over here. My reputation isn't that delicate, I hope. Maybe not, but you don't know Ainsley. I'm beginning to. I wish you wouldn't come. I once shot a mountain lion, Chucky. You did? Well, what's that got to do with people talking? Only this. I'm not easily frightened, so stop trying. Well, if you're going to be stubborn, come on. I think you'd better wait outside, though. I see if the captain will see you. Wake up. Oh, Chucky. Cap, my school teacher says she wants to talk to you. Huh? Come yeah. on, try to clean up a little bit, will you? 
Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I guess you can come in now. It ain't often the captain will see anybody after the government sends him his money. He starts to think and then, so we figure it's best just to leave him to himself. You told him who I am? Yes, he knows who you are, but I don't think it'll do you any good. Why not? Well, I don't think you'll understand the captain. Most people don't. He's not just an ordinary man, you know. He's, he's a hero. Well, I didn't know that. Captain Fred Carter, you, you ain't never heard of him? Have I? Most everybody used to want to meet him. Look. Four of the enemies captured single-handed, alone, under fire. Oh, yes, I remember reading something about that. To be honest, you'd be surprised how many people have forgotten. I can't understand that. When a soldier does what he did, above and beyond the call of duty, you'd think they'd remember. I'm sure they do, but memories are tricky things, Chucky. Yeah, I guess so. You can't expect much of people. They ought to try to understand him. They can't expect the captain to be like them. No, I know they can't. They, they, they had a band for him at the station, too, when he got back from the front. His pictures was in the paper, and, and a guy offered him a thousand bucks for this collection of helmets. Who told you that? Your mother? No, the captain, he likes to talk about it. But I guess she was there. And, and that, that's a picture of him, too. And this is his, uh... You, uh, want to see me? Yes, Captain, this is, this is her. How do you do? How do you do? You, uh, sit down. Here, Cap, I'll... I'll get your coat. I don't want know, what's, what's the Captain to catch cold. He's been kind of sick. All right, Captain. She won't ask him any questions, Cap, will you? No, none at all. I just wanted to meet you, Captain Carter. There's no novelty to you, is it? People clamoring to meet you. Well, what's it about, boy? What's he done? Shocking? Well, nothing, really. His only offense is forgivable, I'm sure. Well, that's all right, Miss Evans. You can tell him I was fighting. Fighting? They were probably fighting about you. Me? Well, what... Who, what for? Well, it was nothing, Cap. I just whacked the Townsend kid one time. Shocky, what did the Townsend boy say about your father? Nothing. Nothing at all. What did all the other boys in the school say about your father? Oh, I, uh, I think I understand. Well, you, you didn't, you didn't tell me about this. I didn't want to bother you, Cap. You have a fine boy, Captain. He's brave and strong and loyal, but he's been fighting a battle, single-handed. You. Uh, you don't think much of me, do you? I don't know you. But Shockey's Captain Carter. I like him. Hey, this place needs a good cleaning. Do you mind if I take a boil at it? Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't clean it up because it'll just get messed again. So then we can clean it again. Yes. <clears throat> oh, dear. This is this. Do you like him? Come on, Cap, we gotta get cleaned up. 
I never heard anything like the way she talked back to Miss Hodges. Just like she didn't know her place. That's the way with all those upstart teachers who get a degree at Columbia. Give her time. She'll get her ears slapped down. <laughs> she did. Miss Hodges told her she'd been in Ainsley a few days herself. Well, if there's any starch left in her after that, we'll iron it out. She's got that good-looking young Matthew boy chasing her already. Hasn't she, Mrs. Gita? I think that was him calling her up. That must be she. Well, well, Miss Evans, you are the late one. We were beginning to worry. <laughs> Have you met all these ladies? I don't believe so. Ladies, this is our new boarder, Miss Evans. She teaches too. How do you do? How do How you do? do? I'm Millicent Goodlow, French teacher. Parlez vous français? May we? Do you look after her, Miss Taylor? Oh, gladly. We met today, quite by accident. You're replacing Dot Minardi, aren't you? Poor Dot. Having to leave right in the middle of a term like that. Why, poor Dot? You know. The things I've heard since she disappeared so mysteriously. Let me have your plate, dear. I had a slice of my delicious meatloaf on the stove for you. Well, that's kind of you. <laughs> oh, Miss Evans. Uh, Mr. Matthew rang up here to locate you. That couldn't be young John Matthew, could it? Thank you, Mrs. Keeter. He was at the school today. Oh, whatever could he be doing there? He wants to enroll, I believe. Could I have that meatloaf, Mrs. Keeter? Well, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no matter what people may say about Jack Matthew squandering his dad's money and what not, I still maintain he's very good looking. Yes. If money and good looks is all a girl wants, he's a cat. Of course, I wouldn't want to marry him. I've had oodles of offers from men with plenty. That's no catch. But I'm saving myself for someone with refinement. I thought that brand died out. Culture may be a thing of the past, but if so, well. So many a flower was born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Ain't it the truth? I beg your pardon. Poor, frustrated flower. Oh, really? I... Excuse me, but uh, I don't know quite what you mean. I'm sorry, but I feel out of place among such brilliant conversationalists. Come on in. Just thanks so well. Why, it's Mr. Matthew. I seem to have lost my app, but I'm sure you can carry on without me. If it isn't the pretty little Mary Evans girl, all grown up now. Having dinner with me? Of course, Jack. I thought you'd never get here, dear. Huh? Uh, get my hat and coat, will you, darling? Huh? Good night, Mrs. Geeta. I didn't think you'd go out with me. You thought right. Huh? Here's where we part, and thanks for rescuing me. What is this? I wouldn't go out with you if this were the Garden of Allah. Good night. Hey! Hey! I don't see why you're taking me in front of the school board. It'll just gum up the works. They don't like me. You let me handle this. We have a quorum present. Should we begin? Apparently, Mr. Matthew isn't going to be with us this afternoon. No. Poor old John has his hands full with his strike. That awful strike. I guess it's a crime now to have a little money. You hear the farmers tell it, you'd think they were giving away milk. I pay 10 cents a quart for milk at your store, Mr. Townsend. I know you do. I can't buy it any cheaper than the independents. Well, I think the whole thing's silly. Such a fuss over a few pennies. This meeting does not concern milk. It concerns a student, Shockey Carter. Now, don't you worry, Shockey. When they see the change in your appearance and the fine little gentleman that you are, they won't expel you. The faculty and I have tried to correct these faults in the boy. Our latest reward has been a classroom fight. Yes, Roger told me. I have suspended Shockey until this meeting. You of the school board must come to some decision regarding his future. 
The burden is too great for the faculty. Have Miss Evans come in. Miss Evans, will you come in, please? And Sharky? That won't be necessary. Wait for me. Good morning, Miss Evans. Good morning. I had hoped that you would meet our school board under more agreeable conditions. This is our new history teacher. The board, Miss Evans. How do you do, Evans? Be seated. I believe that we can come to our decision. A motion is in order. I move that we expel Sharky Carter and send him to the State School of Correction. But you can't solve this boy's problems by expelling him. You're out of order, Miss Evans, but you haven't tried to understand Sharky. Do you mean to imply that we've been in error in analyzing character? I know you have. Well, you've condemned this boy, not judged him. He struck my son and called him a liar. Those are the facts. Are you Roger's father? I am. I don't know you very well, Mr. Thompson. Obviously, you're not a shell-shocked war hero. I'm a temperate man. Regardless, Mr. Thompson, I'm sure you'd uphold Roger if he struck a boy who ridiculed you. Did Mr. Connors' drinking have anything to do with the boys fighting in class? There's a motion before the board. Isn't it your job to help these children? Shocky needs help, not another kick. There's no other recourse. Well, kindness and understanding is what this boy needs. Here he has his place, Miss Evans, but not in this case. Why not try it? You're placing quite a responsibility in our laps. Perhaps you'd care to assume it. Yes, I would. Very well, then. I move that we reinstate Sharky Carter. Conditionally, of course. Making Miss Evans solely responsible for his future conduct. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Where, well, Sharky, did they expel you? No. Nope. Are they going to? Well, I guess it'd suit you all right if they did, wouldn't it? What makes you think that? Well, they're not going to, so you don't need to worry your head about it. Miss Evans is in there talking for me. She likes you. You trying to say that I'm her pet? Well, if you want to put it that way. I'm sorry I stopped to talk to you. I'm almost sorry I ever met you, Sharky. A gentleman would pick up the books and apologize. Sorry. Thanks. I bet if you hit a fella as hard as you hit these books, he wouldn't wake up for a long time. Think so? I think you're the strongest boy in the class. Well, maybe you'd like me to take a whack at some guy for you. Oh, no. But if you were out with a girl, I guess she'd feel safe. It's all right, Chucky. They're not going to expel you. Isn't that fine, Elvira? <laughs> yes. Oh, gee, Elvira, do you think maybe some night after school, if I, uh, if I, well, uh, I'll see you later. Of course, it's school tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's school. Miss Evans? Miss Evans? Gee, they had have been plenty tough except for you, Miss Evans. Not necessarily, Sharky. Well, I want to thank you anyway. Maybe I can do you a favor sometime. You can. You can take me to the basket social if you'd like. Oh, you're kidding me now. No, I'm not. Would you like to go? Oh, well, sure, but I... Uh... Then it's settled. How's your father? Oh, he's fine. Give him my regards and tell him I'll be by sometime tonight to help with the cleaning. Oh, you won't need to do that. You can leave that up to me. But is there anything else you want to talk to me about? I guess not, Sharky. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm certainly surprised to see you here. You sure she's coming? Who? Miss Evans? How'd you get it? Oh. <laughs> well, hello, dear. I'll take this. Uh, you know Mr. Matthews. Here, dear. Put these with the rest of them. And put it on top. Oh, Mr. Matthews. <laughs> Do 
Gee, I, I never been to a dance before. It's well of you to get me in here. I didn't get you in. You belong here as much as the others. Hey, uh, what are they going to do with the lunches after the auction tomorrow? Eat them, of course. I ain't got no money. Someone will share a box with us. That's part of the plan. Everybody, please step forward, please. I know we're all famished. Now, a lady's name is in each of these lunches. It will be the good fortune of the gentleman who buys it to share the contents with her. The bidding is now open. What do I hear? 30 cents. Oh. 40 cents. Oh. 75. One dollar. Sold to Mr. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. This should bring a goodly sum. Now, what do I hear? Ten cents. Oh. <laughs> Sold to the gentleman for one dollar. Oh. That fixes the price of the luncheon. The rest of them will be one dollar. Now, come on. Don't be backwards. What do I hear? All right. Come on. Shall I be seated? By all means. Shocker, you know our guest. Yes. Gosh, I'm hungry. What you got in the box? Fried chicken. With such delightful company, how can you think of food? Tell him I can. Salami? For me? Yes, you've paid for it. This is what I call a swell time. Happy? Ask Miss Evans, is she happy? Gosh, sloppy. Tell him he bought my lunch, not my company. Here, wash that down with some lemonade. I bought the lunch to share your delightful company. Oh, wait, don't run out on me again. Well, what shall we discuss? You. Are you ever serious, Mr. Matthew? I'm serious now. And I'd like to ask you something which is perhaps none of my business. Go ahead. Why don't you persuade your father to end this milk strike? Will it please you? Yes. Then I will. Well, let's talk about us now. More salami? Hello, Shaki. Hello. Why didn't you buy my lunch? What, for a dollar? I can eat all week on a dollar. I didn't sell it, I kept it. You want some? What you got? Three kinds of sandwiches. Can I eat peanut butter? Sure. Well, I'll buy the lemonade. It doesn't cost anything. I know it. Hey, Shocky. Gee, you look swell, doesn't he, Vera? Uh-huh. You think so? Why'd you get the clothes? A lot of the old man's empty bottles. <laughs> Keep your temper. <laughs> you gonna ask me to dance after a while? No. Don't you dance? Not with girls. I bet you can't dance. Shocking is amazing. I'm so sorry I didn't cooperate with you, Miss Evans. But as we grow older, sometimes we get fixed ideas. Oh, you're sweet. How is his father? You'd never recognize him. I'm so glad. You win them all, don't you? He's a fine boy, a good boy. You ask Miss Evans, she'll tell you. Get out of here, Carter. Oh, no, Mrs. Thompson. You and I have got a deal. 
reason for quarreling at all. Take your hands off. Get out of here. Hey, you get him. Cut it out. Cut it out. Shut it. No, 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 no. You punch Roger, Mr. Thompson. You punch me, so everything is going to be all right. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm going to pay him for those cups. Don't forget about it. Go on with your dance. He's okay now, aren't you, Mr. Carter? Oh, no, no. no I'm, I'm through. I'm shot. Oh, no, you can't. You'll feel better as soon as you get some sleep. All right, son. I'm always getting you into trouble, son. I don't know what happens. I should have stayed home with you tonight. I don't want to disgrace you. They're all I've got. But sometimes I... I can't stand as you're alone. I see things, Joe, man. They never stop. Did you hear that? I read it again. It was going like that for days. That's a machine gun mess. Steady, steady, Carter. Captain, you gotta stop thinking about it. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I was. But they were all mowed down, you know. Pete, Jim, Fred. Oh, except me. I know it's all over now, Captain. Yes, yes, you, you're along, Alf. You go along, now. He, he gets that way once in a while. I, I try to watch him, but, gee, I can't be with him all the time. What your father needs, young fella, is a job. Yeah, but who'll give him one? I will. Or at least I'll see that my father does. Do you mean it? I sure do. Have him report at the dairy to go to work in the morning. Golly, thanks, Mr. Matthew. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, soldier. Good night, Chucky. Hey, Cap. Uh, Come on, wake up, wake up. Listen, I got some good news for you. Oh, I'm all right, Chucky. Guess what? No, oh, I give up. You look, you're going to work. Well, we got to do something about that. No, no, listen to me. You, you've got a job. Hmm? <laughs> Who'd give me a job? Hey, Mr. Matthews, Gary, you've got to be there in the morning. Hey, are you, are you serious about this? Now, look, Cap, have I ever lied to you? Oh, no, no, I guess you never did, son. Yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? A job. You're smart, too. You'd be good at it. Well, I have a little drink. Oh, Cap. Well, can I have a little water? <laughs> Here comes one. This isn't your milk. Suppose you get off of the truck. Wait a minute. Why don't you fellas use your heads? My father may not be right, but this is wrong. Go to Dad and present your demands decently. Oh, we've tried talking. John won't listen. Sure he'll listen. When will you see him? Tell him to come to our next meeting at Crowder's Barn. I'll have him there. All right, men. That's the spirit, Pops.
Fountain, I've got a strike on my hands, but it's going to be a golden opportunity. Do? I'm going to cut the price of milk again and force the farmers to a settlement. Right. Starve them out again, huh? They can't feed their cows now and hold their farm. What is it you want, son? There's a mass meeting in Crowder's barn. The farmers want you there. They're not dictating to me. They're willing to talk over this strike. Settle it if they can. That's up to the farmers. I can truck milk in here and make deliveries without them. Crowder Evans and his men have been loyal to you. You can't refuse to listen. I'm doing it. But, Dad, these men are your friends. You counted on them to build up this business. Yes, but they failed me. You failed them. You'll do anything to keep your profit up, wreck the farmers, cut off the milk supply, even starve the kids. That's about enough. Every young upstart in this county is trying to tell me how to run my business. But I'm running it my way. You can't lick this strike your way, but it can lick you. Aren't you going to that meeting? No. Then I am. No. No. <coughs> Where's Matthew? The man is ain't gonna be here. Well, I'm telling you, neighbors, that we can't tolerate this injustice. Something must be done. Last year, it was the flood and lean harvest. The year before, it was the drought and no crop. Now it's the price they pay for milk. Yes, we're having our troubles. Having them, neighbor, won't stop them. Personally, I don't really see a fight. But Matthews leaves us no other choice. Why do you know that he's been trucking milk from Craighead County? Now, we've got to stop those trucks. I thought it ain't going to starve us out. I'm for stopping them. You and me both. And we'll show them that a farmer can fight. Neighbor, we can't go on sitting around forever. That's been our trouble. We've been too easy going. It's high time that we took this matter in our own hands. Am I right? No. no. Now, what we want is action. How are we going to barricade every road and stop every truck? Are you with me? No. Oh, oh, oh. Matt, say a few words. Where's your dad? I thought you said he was going to be here. Well, I lose that bet. You represent Mr. Matthews? No, I'm here on my own today. I still think we can settle this strike without any violence. I know what you fellas have at stake. Your land, your home, the right to a living. The dairy has failed you. How do we know you mean that? Yes, Matthews, your father, ain't he? Forget that. Your burdens are heavy enough. Don't add bloodshed and destruction to them. We ain't got no choice. Ah, what's left? Talking ain't gonna get us no place. You must see my father. I'll go with you. We ain't gonna take no more. If we fail, if he won't settle, there'll be no more bargaining. We'll barricade every road in this county and I'll help you. That's right. fair enough. I'll go with you, Riley. That's far enough. What do you want? Dad, we want to settle this strike peaceably if we can. What's your proposition? We helped you organize this dairy, John. And I've spent a lifetime getting this business on its feet. Every dime I've got's in it. But, Dad, you can't run this dairy indefinitely without these farmers. Have I ever refused to buy your milk? We can sell you milk for less than it costs us. I've got to run my business on a profit. I've reduced the overhead to a minimum. Why don't you farmers try it? You're paying plenty for that milk you're trucking in from Crayhead County. What of it? Pay off farmers that price and we'll call off this strike. Oh, no. I'm losing money now to fight you men the same as you are to lick me. You'll come to my terms. Is that final, Dad? You know it is. All right, you're asking for it. We'll give you a strike that is a strike. We'll break you. You can try it. And when we're through, we'll organize a real cooperative dairy, one of our own. Provided there's enough business brains among them. Don't send any more trucks through, Dad. We'll stop them. You can try that, too. Come on. Riley, when will that new milk be ready to go? At 7.30. I think these farmers mean business. How many trucks going out? Three will handle the shipment. See that they're filled. We'll send them out together. Hey, Matthews is a fighter. I like fighters. So do I, if they don't lose their head. Now, you'll have to come back tonight and help load. I'd be glad to. Cap! Cap! Hey, Cap! <laughs> I know what 
what you were thinking. I was not. <laughs> I fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, how do you like it? I should swell, Cap. Coat and pants just match. Thanks. About to strike you. Yeah, it's first rate. Oh. Sticking. Well, why don't you take the tag out? Well, get your coat and hat on. Miss Evans is going to treat us to a picture show tonight. Oh, I, uh, I can't go. I'm working tonight. Well, it won't be any fun without you. What did I put on my new suit well, for? a chance to make some extra dough. Don't you worry. You and I are going to have a lot of fun from now on. Gosh, Cap, I, I like it like this. So do I, son. Well, don't work too hard. Here, here, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's treating me. Well, you can buy some ice cream. Thanks. Oh, I wouldn't uh, explain to her. Yes. Well, so long. So long, boy. That'll do it, fellas. That'll stop them. Sure, heavy enough. Hey, come on, get a move on. What are you standing around here for? Riley, where are you sending my truck? To Chicago. Only you'll make the station at Wilford. If I can. Ah, uh, you can. Hey! Well, this is milk, that butter. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. And watch the stacking of them cans, too. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Hey, what are you doing here? How about the picture show? Well, Miss Evans said we could be her guest some other night. Oh, that's fine. Hey, you, you shouldn't wear that around here. You get it all dirty. <laughs> Larson, what's the idea? You're on your way to Evanston with that load. I'm not going through till the highways are clear. Oh, afraid to go through the picket line, huh? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> hey! Mike, you go on out Highway 36. They won't bother you none there. Come on, get going. Yeah, but I don't want any trouble either. Oh. So the daisy bed is spreading, eh? Well, one of these trucks is going through. Why don't you ice some milk? It'll keep overnight. Ah, uh, all of you guys yelling. If they want you good enough enough to fight, your trucks are big enough and they're fast enough. If you're a driver, you'll put them through that line. Yeah, and over the top. Mr. Riley, I've been over the top. The captain's not afraid of anything. Did you ever drive a truck? Oh, yes, sir. In the war, I did. Sure, he's a good driver, too. Yeah, I'll take it over the line. All right. Take Larson's truck. Yes, sir, I'll get my coat. This is a cinch for the captain. Yeah, it's a cinch for anybody. He's got a little nerve. Don't send any trucks out, Riley. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. Your father's still the boss, and uh, you're not working here anymore. Mr. Matthews, the captain was just made a driver. That'll mean a raise for him if you don't make a fuss. Are you sending Carter out on one of those trucks? And why not? We've sent trucks through that farmer's picket line before. You can't send trucks out tonight. Listen, you can run the farmer's fight, but you can't run mine. Riley's got Carter on a truck. You can't do that. Riley handles the hiring of the drivers. That's all right, Mr. Matthews. The captain can do You want to see your father killed? That shell shock veteran won't stop at the barricade. Oh, all right. I'll phone Riley and have him stop him. Hey, Jeff! Get in your car and overtake him.
here comes a truck now. He's coming pretty fast, too. Just leaving. Sharky, I've got a great big room over to my house. Just the kind of room you'd like. There's a big bookcase with glass doors where you can keep all of your dad's things. Sharky, I want you to come and live with me. No, thanks, Mr. Matthew. I guess it's time to be glad to get rid of... Glad to get rid of the cat, too. Not now, Shockey. The town's proud of your father. You see, he settled the milk strain. You mean... He did die here? We'll get these things later. <laughs> 